So in this video, we're going to talk about thin provisioning. But not only that, we're going to physically show how uh, the effects of the different levels has an effect on the underlying storage that's used. <clears throat> Now, NetApp's best practice is that you thin provision the flex volume with auto grow. You create the lung the size of what the data store you actually want. And then you do a thick provision on the VMDKs or the individual hard disks. What I'm going to do is show you how the effects uh, follow all the way through and how the storage is actually used. So we have here just our uh, root volume and that is thick provisioned and we can see that actually at the aggregate, 5% is used. Now the aggregate is the best location to see how much physical storage is actually being used uh, and how much you've got left. Uh, the best practices from NetApp are that we should always keep at least 10% free. Uh, this has changed over the years. It used to be 75%. Personally, I like to stay around the 75, 80%. So we can see at the moment 5% is used and that is the all the space from the flex volume. So our total space is 9.6 terabytes. We've used approximately half a terabyte. Now I want you to keep an eye on this figure here and the percentage used and we're going to look at these figures uh, and see how much has been used as we go throughout this video. So the first part is to create a flex volume to store our data store in. So NetApp's uh, best practice is to thin provision this with auto grow. Okay, and we're gonna select the thin provisioning tab. We're gonna create. Okay, so we're going to now edit this under advance. We are going to auto grow and we're going to auto grow in, in uh, increments of uh, 100 gig. And this is the maximum size that we are going to allow the uh, volume to grow to. So we should always allow a little bit of um, space in addition to what the lung size or the data store we're going to create. save and close that let's go back to our aggregate okay we can see that creating a volume of one terabyte big okay we can see that this has taken no physical storage we're still at five percent and the available space is still around about half a uh, half a terabyte And we're going to create this at one terabyte. And again, we're going to thin provision this. And we're going to pop it into our volume. So we now have a lung that's one terabyte big. Or we have a volley, which hosts that lung, which is one terabyte big. And we check the aggregate, and again, 5% used, half a terabyte space used. So far, nothing's been taken from the physical disks. Great. Now let's go and create our data store. And we, we can see that our new data store has been created here. One terabyte big. Perfect. Return back to the net app. We can now, so we've created a data store. Let's go and look at the lung. Nothing used. Nothing used. Nothing used, perfect. 
Let's now add a virtual hard disk to this server. Now we're going to start off by doing this as thin provisioned. It is widely recommended that you don't do thin on thin. There's no categoric uh, NetApp white paper that I've seen that says you shouldn't, that you mustn't do it. It's just not recommended to do thin on thin. But let's just look at what happens when we do do thin on thin. So if we now go and look at our data store. we can see that still the whole amount is free because we've created a thin, thin VMDK. And we go back, it will come as no surprise that the aggregate 5%, nothing's been used. So that's thin on thin. And what will happen is as data is put onto the VMDK, that will expand, that will expand the data store, that will expand the lung, which will expand the flex volume, which will ultimately take space from the aggregate. Now let's create a thick volume. Uh, to be specific, a lazy zeroed thick volume. Lazy zeroed. So what this is doing is it's going to actually allocate the space but it's not going to zero out the uh, the disk itself. I'm going to write this as 500 gig. Let's see what effect this has had. So if we now look at the data store, we can see that 50% of the space has gone. That 500 gig has now been removed from the data store. If we look at the net app, look at the lung. we can see here that the lung because it's thin provisioned although 50 percent of the data store has been taken as no data has been written we can still see that zero percentage has been used furthermore flex volume exactly the same so of course our aggregate five percent half a terabyte so although the data store itself is showing 50 percent used the underlying SAN, no data has been used at all. So what happens if we now put some files onto that thick provisioned hard disk? So I've mounted that thick provisioned VMDK as an F drive on this server. As you can see, it's half a terabyte big and empty. I'm going to copy some files on here um, around about 5 gig and see what happens. Great, so if we look at that drive, we can see that uh, nearly four gig has been taken up. If we go back and look at the data store, uh, we can see that nothing's changed there because it was thick provisioned. There'll be no change in the amount of storage that's been used there. But if we have a look at the NetApp and have a look at the lung, We can see that there's some actual uh, usage of the lung here. And we look at the volume and we can see here that five gig of data has been used. And if we go and look at the aggregate, we'll see that this is increased by five gig as well. So putting five gigs worth of data onto that thick provision disk has used, all, uh, has used the space all the way through to the actual aggregate itself. Now, if we go back to the server and delete those files, We can see the drive is empty. The data store itself, we do a refresh, has not changed. And if we look at the net app, we'll see the space has not been recovered. So although we've deleted those files from the VMDK, the space is lost. That space is gone 
forever. So what happens if we actually delete the VMDK? If we have a look at the data store, we can see we've recovered all that space back from the data store. We've now got a terabyte of data store space we can use. However, if we look at the lung, we will see that that space has still been allocated. We can see that the space on the volume is still 5 gig and the aggregates the same. We've effectively lost that space. So the next question is what happens if we create a, another disk? So we've remounted a new F drive at uh, 750 gig. So let's have a look at the data store. As expected, the data store shows that loss of space. So we're down to only 270 or gig left. If we look at the net app, we will see that no additional space has been taken at the lung. volume or aggregate. So now I'm going to copy another 5 gigs worth of data onto this F drive. This is different data to before, but about 6 gig. Okay, so we put about 6 gig onto that drive. The data store won't change because it was all already thick provisioned. The space in the lung hasn't gone up. Now if we look here, this has only gone up by 6 gig. And this is important to understand. What's happened is Although we, f we freed up the space by deleting the last VMDK, we couldn't recover that space because it was deleted. What's happened is when we have uh, created a new VMDK in that lung, it has reused that free space within the net app. So it's using the stuff that is not allocated elsewhere um, first. And this has only increased a small amount because oh, it was slightly bigger than before. And if we look at our aggregate, we will see the same there. But it hasn't added another six to the previous six it's already taken. So it's important to understand this as we are building our VM infrastructure. Now the last test to show is the final type of provisioning. So next we're going to look at the third type of disks that can be provisioned. And this is eager zeroed. If we add a new VMDK, I'm going to create it eager zeroed, and we're going to specify it in the thin data store, and we're going to create this to be 200 gig. Now, what eager zero does is it actually writes data to the VMDK and zeroes it all out. And what this does is it does increase performance. I have seen statistics that say between uh, 10 and 11 percent increased in IO performance on eager zero VMDKs. Now the reason for this is when you are using thick and standard thin, sorry, thin and standard thick provision, as the VMDK has to grow, it effectively has to pause IO to grow it. And in high IO operations such as Exchange SQL, that can reduce the amount of I.O. throughput. Now because it has to write that data, it's actually going to take a few minutes. What's actually going to happen due to the VIIA interface to the NetApp, that's using the storage SDK within VMware. The VMware is actually offloading the process of uh, zeroing this out to the NetApp. The load is currently on the NetApp and not on the ESXi host. 
Okay, so we can see that the server has finished build uh, zeroing out that drive. And if we have a look at the data store, we can see the space has been taken. If we have a look at our NetApp, we can see that the lung has 22% used. The volume is 22% used. And we can look down here. We can see that that zeroing out has taken space. And finally, if we look down at the aggregate, we can see it's gone up to 7%. So using Eager Zero does actually take underlying space from the uh, NetApp. And so this is a compromise between performance and um, the ability to have flexible uh, data under the underlying net app. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.